Mike. So tell us the application that you've been working on. So I'm here to tell you a story about LabVIEW and the big telescope. ESO, the European Southern Observatory, is supported by 13 European countries. They design, build, and operate some of the largest and most advanced telescopes on Earth. Uh, their, their flagship is the VLT, or Very Large Telescope. Yeah, it, it took the first image of an extrasolar planet 173 light years away. It can image objects that are four billion times fainter than what we see with our eyes. But even with this amazing technology, uh, astronomers want more. They want a much bigger telescope so they can look further and deeper. So ESO is going to build the ELT, the Extremely Large Telescope. <laughs> they're very, pretty creative with their names, aren't they? Yes, actually they're extremely accurate with their yeah. names. You can see by uh, looking at these physicists down here that it's pretty large. Its primary mirror called M1 is four times bigger than that of any optical telescope on Earth. At 42 meters, it is nearly half a football field in diameter. Half of a football field. Yep. Even in Texas, we'd say that's a pretty big mirror. That's big. Now, but how do they build such a big mirror? Well, that's where things get a bit complicated. Mirrors of this size are impossible to build. So they are they're composed of many individual mirror segments. And they're all mounted on this enormous structure. In M1, there are 984 of these mirror segments. And each segment is a meter and a half in diameter and weighs nearly 330 pounds. And all these segments have to be perfectly aligned to within like 10 nanometers. So here's a LabVIEW application that demonstrates how the mirror works. Here we're showing two mirror segments. Each mirror segment is a hexagon. Along the edge of each of the sides of the hexagon is an edge sensor. These edge sensors can detect the uh, position of the mirror relative to its neighbor. Underneath each mirror is an actuator that can be used to control the position of the mirror very accurately. So imagine the winds coming and hitting the mirror structure, right? This is on Earth, it's moving a little bit. Now I'm exaggerating here, but you can see these mirrors are no longer aligned. What we need the control algorithm to do is to measure these edge sensors and bring these mirrors back into alignment. So it looks something like this. You get the idea. So no matter how the, mir the, the structure moves, the mirror, mirrors are brought into alignment by the control running and controlling the actuators, shown here. And this is what a seven segment mirror section looks like. So basically, you have to control all these mirrors together to make them be one big mirror. That's right. How many of these segments did you say there are? Mike, for M1, there are 984 hexagonal wow. segments. So let me, let me do the math real quick. So if I round up to 1,000, you've got six inputs and three actuators on every segment. Right. So you have 6,000 inputs and 3,000 outputs to control this mirror. That's right. So we have to compute the, uh, how each of the 3,000 3, actuators should be adjusted for each of the 6,000 edge sensors. So in math terms, this comes down to a 3,000 by 6,000 matrix by 6,000 vector multiply. And we have to do this 500 to 1,000 times a second. So every millisecond, you've got to do all those calculations. That's right. OK, so you, I think you gave the audience a good idea of why it's a big control problem. Right. How is it that we came to be working with ESO on this problem? Well, ESO is already working with National Instruments on the data acquisition and the data synchronization of such a large channel count system. Along the way, we began to work with them on a mapping control problem. So here's one of the VIs that we worked, uh, with ESO, worked on with ESO's help. Here we go. So with this VI, we are um, computing the mirror layout. We're designing the control matrix, and then we're actually simulating the control loop. At the heart of this control loop is this massive matrix vector multiply. So that's really doing all the work. That's the, doing the, all the, the work. The computation is in that one matrix operation. That's right. So we've kind of shown that we can do the control in LabVIEW. And you know we can use LabVIEW's graphics to illustrate the operation of the telescope and analyze performance. But this particular implementation is not nearly fast enough. So you, this one shows the idea, but it's not fast enough yet. So that's right. So then we show us how you made it faster. Well, we had to look at 
multi-core multi technology. Yeah. So they take advantage of multi-core processors. We started to investigate different algorithms, different block diagrams. And with this approach, exploring how, the, how many cores it takes to do the job, we were able to get down to something like 15 milliseconds. So we're getting close. So you can now do, you're using an eight core machine, you can do the computation in 15 milliseconds, so, you're, so you probably feel like you're getting pretty close, we know we're gonna be able to do it. That's right, right. that's okay. right. But there's one other thing I forgot to mention, all this one more has to be done in real time. Real time. That's right, but because Labby real time runs on multi-core processors, we think we can meet this requirement as well. Okay, so you've done the design, you've shown product feasibility, you have it running on real time, how close can we actually get to controlling the telescope? Uh, pretty close. So what we have on stage here is the, the setup. We have two Dell boxes. These are power horses, Dell Precision T7400s, each with eight cores. And they're connected for the data passing deterministically over the gigabit time trigger network. And then of course they're on the standard network to my uh, notebook, which is serving as the host PC. And this box is the mirror box. So we would actually build the mirror system. This is the mirror box simulating the mirror. This is the controller box running the control algorithm. This is doing the bulk of the work. The mirror box basically takes in the 3,000 actuators, pretends it's a mirror, runs a mirror algorithm to simulate M1, and maybe we'll add some wind, something like that, to test. And then we generate the 6,000 uh, sensor values, and, that sends to the and that's then sent and received to the controller box. And that box takes in the 6,000 uh, elements, runs a control algorithm to align the mirrors, and then outputs the 3,000 actuators that it computed. And all this is running in the loop. Let's see. So this, this computer is the controller. Yes, that's That computer is actually simulating the telescope mirror. That's right. All written with LabVIEW, running in real time. We are demonstrating So this. you're simulating the whole control of the telescope with LabVIEW. That's, that's pretty much. Let's, okay, let's, can you run that? Let's check it out. So if we hit this thing with wind, you can see the control bringing it back into alignment. And it looks like you're doing the ca your control calculation in pretty about good. two milliseconds. Pretty good, using current technology. So you're running the control algorithm now in, in that window of two milliseconds, which they need That's to right. control the telescope. So we're done. ESO's well, got to be happy. You can control very, the telescope, right? They are very happy. Uh, but we haven't so solved the whole control problem, Mike. I said that okay. M1 was the primary mirror. So here's what the entire mirror system looks like. It's a five mirror system. So M1 is the massive mirror that receives the original uh, uh, rays of light. And basically that's bounced back M2, M3. And the fourth mirror is called M4. It's an adaptive mirror. They want to use this adaptive mirror to uh, compensate for uh, wave front aberrations that you get from the atmosphere, like when stars twinkle. So let me show you a VI. So once again, we use actuators to control the mirror surface, but for M4, this is a two or two millimeter thin mirror surface spread over two and a half meters in diameter over 8,000 actuators. The wavefront image uh, sensor data comes down as an image. It maps into a 14,000 element vector. So what we need to do is very much like M1, where there we're, we're actively controlling the mirror shape and M4, we're actually adapting the mirror shape based on the sensor data. Once again, it's massively difficult. So we have to take in these uh, 14,000 element uh, sensor data and then compute each time. Again, we're shooting for two milliseconds. Each time we're trying to compute then how 8,000 actuators. This becomes an 8K by 14K matrix vector multiply. If we upgrade it a bit to 9K by 15K, then we come down to a problem that's about 15 times harder than the M1, the larger mirror. So we need 15 machines, and each machine better have a bunch of cores on it. It's 15 times more processing than the first application. That's right. And you're gonna do all this with LabVIEW. We are trying right now. So what we did is we have very friendly neighbors, Dell, and they invited us over to their Round Rock location, and we were running tests mm -hmm. on their Dell M1000 system. As it's configured here, it's a 16 blade system. So 16 blades, how many cores per blade? Each core has eight, each machine has eight cores in it. So you're gonna be programming a 128 core machine with that's LabVIEW right. Distributing to prove LabVIEW that you control. can control that mirror. That's right. Wow, that's a pretty impressive application of multi-core LabVIEW. It's a blast. Good luck, Mike. Hopefully we'll see it next year too. Okay, Thanks. thank you.